Greetings, all. Frog here. Let's learn Kerbal Space Program. I think we're on, like, science. Doing some training. Doing this? Yes, science. Science basics. Verno von Kamen. We'll walk you through the Kerbal Scientific Method. You'll learn how experimentation works and why it's so cool. Okay. Let's do it, Werner. Time warp. Hello and welcome to today's lecture on the Kerbal Scientific Method. I am Werner von Kamen, scientist extraordinaire. This tutorial doesn't really require any previous knowledge, but in order to gather science points, you will need you'll have to acquaint yourself with almost every aspect of the game, so you should do them all at some point. We are now at the Kerbal Space Center. I'll give you a quick tour. You can hover over the mouse over any buildings to see if it's an aim. See, I think anytime I make mistakes, it's just as he's not a native English speaker, right? So that's that's what's happening. All right. So what am I doing? Hovering over stuff? There's a bar at the bottom of the screen. Oh, there is! Look at that. That would have been handy to note in my last time when I was just screwing around. Alright, anyway. Next. Aha! The large building on the top left closest to the runway is the space plane hangar. Okay, yeah, sure. That makes sense. Here you can build and fly space planes. The large cube-like structure in the middle of the vehicle assembly building, this is where you would be constructing most of your spacecraft. What's this thing? Vehicle assembly, yeah. It is connected to the launch pad located at the upper right. This is where you can put your creations to test and start new missions. However, the launch pad will only allow vertical launches. That'd be really tough to do it. Okay, anyway. Crew management and hiring applications will take place in the astronaut complex, which is located next to the... I don't know what kind of accent I'm doing anymore. Flagpole on the left. The facility with the three parabolic antennae... Antennas? Should it be antennae? Is the tracking station, though which you can manage, access... And observe all active missions through which. Okay, so antennae. This thing. That's the tracking thing. Alright, that's the tracking center. Um, astronaut complex located next to the flagpole. What flagpole? Oh, that's the flagpole. Astronaut complex. I see it now. It's tough to see from this angle. The large complex at the bottom of the space center is the research and development complex, the focus of this tutorial. This is where you will make use of the science points you have missions awards you, and you will gain more parts. Go ahead and click it. See it in action. Wow, that's a huge complex. I'm intimidated. Very good. What you see in the middle of the graph paper is the tech tree. Can I move the tech tree? I can. Good. It shows how far your research has taken Kerbal technology. You don't have much to show right now because you're not a world-class scientist like myself. At least he's, you know, not egotistical. At least not yet. But I trust you have the potential to achieve great things. Excuse me. It's just plain old water today still. In a typical career game, you will start with a few parts and have to earn the rest. For education's sake, I've gone ahead and given some data to your space program. So you should have enough science to unlock the next node. The amount of science you have is shown in the top right. Uh, five? I guess? Let's get cracking. Select any of the available grayed out nodes and click the blue research button on the right pane. Well, what do we want? Would we rather have basic rocketry? Or would we rather have engineering? Um, let's get basic rocketry. <laughs> Hooray! That's how research is done. That's it? There's no time involved? Just immediate? Huh. You should have noticed new nodes to be researched became available from the one you just researched. Well, yeah, that's how tech trees work. Don't know what to pick next? Don't worry. You can select a node at any time and useful information will be displayed in the right pane. For example, what parts it contains and how much science is needed to research it. Makes sense to me. Oh, these numbers are 443. Eighteen, five, I don't know. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, this is all nice and jolly. Well, this is all nice and jolly, but how do I get more science? You can get more doing many things in combination. For example, crew reports of your missions, fulfilling contracts, collecting samples, equipping your ship with parts for experiments, such as the mystery goo, well, and actually using them. There are many possibilities, really. All of the actions I described can be accessed through the accessed? Accessed? Wow. Accessed through the various right-click context menus. There's a right-click context menu. I don't see one. Just keep in mind that your crew needs to transmit the results or survive the mission for you to collect the science, which makes sense. All of the activities I mentioned and the many others you can discover are kept for the record. To keep track of your progress, you can access the science archives by clicking the yellow button. Oh, I see it. I see it, I see it. That's it. 
The first and more, most important thing to notice is the rugged good looks of this fellow in charge. Jeez, not egotistical at all. You can also see what activities you have already done, when, with whom, and how much science they reward you. I should also be and with how much. Anyway, this is important because you see, if you repeat the same experiment multiple times, its scientific value degrades because you're not learning anything new. Mind you, as a result, you will not get as... Wait, what? Mind you, as a result, you will not get as much science as you did the first time until you get practical and ethical. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Another outstanding feature of the archives is you can check which celestial bodies you've already visited and conducted experiments around. There's a lot of celestial bodies. You can do so by clicking the icon corresponding to the body you're interested in. For now, you'll only see the records of the research I gave you, but once you start doing your own science, you'll be able to check it here. Okay, that's kind of cool. So you get experiments, situations, different biomes. Moho? What is Moho? I don't know. I can't click on them anyway. All right, next. <laughs> it's all I can say about science. Oh, okay. It's a theoretical class, and I'm sure it will make a lot more sense when you go out and try it yourself. Remember that science requires curiosity, so go out and experiment, and don't be discouraged if a mission doesn't go quite as planned. <laughs> I assume he means if, if you get home. Uh, if you learn something new, it's not a complete failure. If you're still feeling lost, feel free to try the other tutorials. I must continue my own research. I'm looking forward to your accomplishments. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, red button, we're out. That doesn't help. Let's also do the red button here. Quit to main menu. Alright, more training. Moon or bust. It's to the moon! Part 1. This tutorial will interest you to flights outside of a curved sphere of influence. You know what I'd like to do is like... <laughs> landing. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that landing... Maybe landing was part of flight basics. I might have to go back and do that. Well, anyway, we're going to the moon. Yay! Welcome to the first in a series of scenarios designed to prepare you for flight in and around Kerbin's local system. I'm going to assume you've completed both the Flight Basics tutorial as well as Orbiting 101. If not, you should go do them first. When you're ready to go, hit continue. We're sinking, by the way. We are apparently not in a circular orbit. An important part of flights between celestial objects is a transfer orbit, which basically means an orbit used to change between two orbits. In our case, the periapsis of our orbit will be very near to Kerbin, and the apoapsis will extend just beyond the moon's orbit. The same applies to an interplanetary trajectory just on a much larger scale. Now press the M key to go on the map view! Uh, Alright, we're in it. To perform a successful transfer, it needs to take the same amount of time for both you and your target object to reach the same location. If you're really knowing what you're doing, you could transfer, calculate your own transfer orbit on the fly, or you could try all eyeballing it, but it's much easier to use maneuver nodes. Yeah, let's do that. So let's go ahead and create one. Click anywhere on your orbit and click the Add Maneuver button. Do note that when playing a career game, maneuver nodes will not be immediately available. Okay. Add Maneuver. Maneuver nodes let you plan orbital maneuvers ahead of time, and most importantly, without wasting precious fuel. As you can see, the maneuver nodes have six handles. Yeah, I see that. The green ones are prograde and retrograde, the purples are normal and anti-normal, and the blues are radial and anti-radial, of course. I'm not going to get into detail because these are the same vectors on the nav ball you saw in the orbiting tutorial. Just remember that prograde and retrograde help you grow or shrink your orbit, and normal and anti-normal help you tilt it. Yeah, yeah. You can click and drag the different handles to see the effect on your theoretical orbit by affecting the vector in question. In our particular case, we're going to bring the vessel's orbit apoapsis up just enough to intercept the moon's orbit around 45 degrees ahead of the current position. If your trajectory is correct, the orbit line will shift colors representing a change in which celestial body's gravity is holding onto you when you reach that point. That's cool. I have a new item in my inventory, apparently, for doing this. Which didn't go up onto the screen. That's interesting. This is the first Steam game to have the Steam overlay that didn't actually appear in my recording. Huh, don't get distracted. Let's get to it, then! With the handle showing, pull the prograde handle until your theoretical orbit intersects that of the moon. It has to be an intercept trajectory, though, so move the node itself as necessary until you get one. If you want to start over, you can delete the maneuver and create a new one. Right-click on it. Okay, all right. All right, so pull the prograde handle. Prograde's this one. Apparently not. Uh, 
Apparently that was bad. Because that'll crash us into the planet. This is the prograde? Alright. Where's the moon? Moon? Where are you, moon? Moon? How do I... How do I scroll you? Well, I could turn you at least. There's the moon! Moon. Oh, that's too far. That's too far! Oh, I see how it works. Ah, I get it. Oh, don't, don't change that. Okay, that's good. But we gotta move it. We're getting there. It's going to change color, apparently. Alright, now I need to burn this baby. Okay. Give me more of this baby. I get it. I get it. Give me more of this, baby. Can I just... I just want to, like, move. Click and drag. I expect that it must be an intercept directory, too. So move the node until you get... as necessary. So I can just move this thing? Oh, yeah. It's way easier than what I was trying to do. All right. Let's start over. So how do we delete this? Right-click while it's open. Delete. Okay. Let's do it again. Add a maneuver. All right. So let's uh, let's get bigger. All right. That's way too big. It's fun though. All right. Now move this thing. Which way are you moving? I wish you could just tell me which way you're moving. That would be so much more helpful. Like, how do I know? It's too far out is the problem. We need to get it closer. That's like it. No. But it's not an intercept trajectory. How do we get to the intercept trajectory? Until I get one. Where will we intercept? Which way? I See, I don't know which way it's going. Oh, 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 look out, there we go, alright, so that's the intercept, intercept trajectory, it's going this way, apparently, that would be a very visually helpful thing to see, like, I can't tell which way this is orbiting, I could just set it as a target, apparently, um, alright, so we've got this thing now, the apoapsis is way the heck out there, we've got a moon escape, we're escaping the moon, okay, good, continue, there we go. Your theoretical orbit is now on an intercept trajectory, heading right for the moon. There are a few things to notice. Bring out your nav ball. Bring out your nav ball. Boom. All right, I have my nav ball. You'll see a few things that weren't on there before the maneuver node. The bar on the right is a velocity change, or delta V, required to make your theoretical orbit. That's a lot. You will also see the approximated burn time needed to deplete the bar and how long it will take to reach the maneuver. My, this is taking forever. Please click on any point in the orbit beyond the maneuver node and then click warp to next maneuver. We're getting close to maneuver time. I didn't need to do that apparently. There's one final step to take before executing it. You'll now see an additional blue icon. I see that. In your nav ball. It tells you the direction your vessel needs to be pointing in order to perform the maneuver successfully. If the marker is not visible, you'll see a small arrow. Okay, well it's visible. I'll give you an expert tip. Start your burn when the indicator is half the time the maneuver takes before you get there. For example, if your approximated burn is 20 seconds, start burning 10 seconds before you get there. Sometimes your estimated burn will display as not applicable. This happens burn a little so the value gets updated. This tip is not mandatory, but it's more efficient since it's quite a long burn. I suggest you start ASAP anyway. I don't understand what I'm doing now. I don't have a T minus anything. Estimated burn says nothing. So I gotta do what? I gotta do a small little burn? That's uh, this one, right? It's this one? That's that one. 
An estimated burn, 45 seconds. Node in T plus one. I missed it. Is that what you're telling me? I missed it. This is ridiculous. Okay, here. Warp to next maneuver. Apparently it's not. T minus 37 minutes. You're supposed to warp. Warp to next maneuver. Oh, I'm actually burning fuel. That's funny. So there's more than one way to burn fuel. Yeah, I bollocks this one right up, didn't I? Warp! That's the whole warp to next maneuver part. Start your burn when the indicator is half the time the maneuver takes before you get there. For example, if you approximate a burn... Okay. So, we're getting close to the mark, getting close to the mark, getting close to the mark. And stop. Okay. So. We're T plus 40? How did I just... How did I miss it again? This is very confusing. Kerbal Space Program, man. It's complicated. I don't get it. Wow. So I need to start, like, back there? Is that what you're telling me? Because I'm plus 40 to get here now. When I was a few minutes... Oh, my God. Well, we're just... We'll, we'll do it again. Give me another one. Warp around again. I don't think I'm going to get back around. I think it's going to give me another problem. And it's not like it resets itself. It's unfortunate. Well, we're just going to try burn and see what happens. Are you ready? I'm ready. Here we go. Alright, we're just going to try burn and, and experiment, right? One minute and 22 seconds. Oh, just burn that sucker. Estimated burn is five minutes long. Yeah, we blew this one straight up. Okay, just stop. We need to restart this bad boy. Can we do that? Can we restart you? How do we restart you? We really need to restart. End scenario. Yes, let's try it again. To the moon. Go. I have a feeling I have to restart the whole thing, though, because that's what happened the last time. Yep. Gosh darn it. Oh, well, maybe not. All right, we're going to add a maneuver. We're good with this. We're going to go next. We're going to go next. We're going to continue. Let's, let's get a top-down view. Zoom out a little bit. Give me that bad boy. And let's do this. Farther out, please. Thank you. Come back in. Come back in. Okay. Zoom out. Where's the moon? There's the moon. Oh. 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 Give me a trajectory. That's, that's really far. That seems like a very weird trajectory. Well, we're going to have a moon encounter. Okay, go. <laughs> yes, yes. Nav ball. Thank you for the nav ball. It's beautiful. Click on any point on the orbit beyond the maneuver node. Okay, that's beyond the one. Warp to next maneuver. All right. So the burn says it's not applicable. That's unfortunate. So let's, let's burn a smidge, cut it back. 16 seconds. So at T minus eight seconds, we go. Can you wait 40 seconds? 
It's gonna be a little bit longer video, that's okay. <sighs> He's not giving me the next clue about burning with X amount of seconds left, but that's okay. We're gonna do it anyway. Yeah, so we wanna do it T minus eight seconds. We're gonna th hit the throttle and go. That tip should have come up a lot longer. It takes more than like 10 seconds to read this thing for most people, I'm sure. And that's about what it'd give us, 20 seconds maybe? That's that's not enough time to read that. That's okay, here we go. T minus 10, nine, go! All right, we're going. It's quite a long burn, it says. You gotta burn all this, right? All that's gotta go. We're going to space, baby. Space. Well, I guess we're in space. We're going to the moon, baby. What's it look like? It's looking good. Maybe. I don't know what I'm watching. That apoapsis is getting bigger. I don't know if it's getting bigger fast enough. But it's getting bigger. It's a lot of delta V to make this thing happen. Probably should be pointing in a different direction. Why is my SAS not doing this for me? This is the problem here. No, nope. oh my goodness, we're lost. We're lost, guys. We're lost. Goodbye. See ya. We're out of here. We're going straight into the into the whatever. There should be a computer that does this for you. I should not have to do this. I'm getting sick. I'm getting sick. Are you getting sick? I'm getting sick. Stop. Stop. Oh my god, stop. Oh, we're going everywhere. Why is the SAS not on? Lock to the maneuver, man. Goodness. I think I just use that forever, because goodness me. I'm not good enough to fly this thing manual. Yeah, so obviously we didn't do it with enough. The, the maneuver's not going to work. Unless that grows real fast, real quick. But I don't think so. I think we're out of fuel and we missed it. Because I was fooling around not paying attention to that thing. Yep, that's a problem. I don't think it's supposed to do that. We're out of fuel. Gene's gonna be so disappointed. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we're just gonna be stuck here forever. So, alas, that didn't work. Uh, we'll give it another go in the next episode, though, because this uh, seems like it should be important. We're gonna turn the computer on a little quicker because that's the obvious thing to do. I don't want to fly this sucker manual. So uh, we'll just give it a go. But hey, that's what, that's what we're doing. We're learning, right? This is all about learning. We're learning Kerbal Space Program together. Hopefully this gives you a little inspiration to get out there and learn yourself and give me some comments about, you know, hey, you idiot, you should have done this. Although be respectful because that's what being a member of the pond is all about. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did click the like button. Consider subscribing to the channel to stay updated everything as it happens. And until next time, cheers.